Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Airlander 10 impacts terrain during second test flight. Piper receives EASA approval of their M500. Another proposed flying car gets media attention. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's August 25th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. It was only last week that we reported about the first flight of the Airlander 10 hybrid air vehicle. Now, we're sorry to say that we must report that the supersized airship suffered a mishap on its second test flight. In a statement posted on its website, Hybrid Air Vehicles said that the aircraft undertook its second test flight on Wednesday and flew for 100 minutes, completing all the planned tasks before returning to Cardington to land. According to the statement from the company, Airlander experienced a heavy nose-first landing on the front of the flight deck, has sustained some damage, which is currently being assessed. Both pilots and the crew are reported to be safe and well, and the aircraft is secured and stable at its normal mooring location. Hybrid Air Vehicle says it runs a robust set of procedures for flight test activities and investigation of issues. We will be running through these in the days ahead as we continue the development of the Airlander aircraft. The company said further updates will follow in due course. The European Aviation Safety Agency has certified Piper's M500, clearing the way for the aircraft to enter into service on the European registry. Simon Caldicott, the president and CEO of Piper Aircraft, said in part, EASA certification is an important milestone allowing us to kick off a major sales campaign to bring the M500 to the European market. This is the third international certification for the M500, including Brazil, Canada, and Japan. Piper says the five-place M500 features the latest advances in Garmin G1000 technology, with safety features unique to this class of aircraft. These features include electronic stability protection, underspeed protection, coupled go-round, synthetic vision technology, and automatic level mold. Caldicott added that the enhanced autopilot flight control system make the M500 well-suited for European topography and the market's requirements. After the break, Veterans Group says military air shows are about selling war. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high-performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. According to a report, the glamour and allure of seeing the world's first flying car being delivered to a client is garnering a lot of attention. And it's said that Google is seeing over 135,000 monthly searches for the term flying car in North America alone. That is why CEO of Pal V, Robert Dingamon, says he is so excited that Maxim Magazine recently selected Pal V as the most likely company to deliver a real flying car. The company also says that the magazine, Top Gear, is referring to their vehicle as the world's first plausible flying car. Pal V says you can expect to be hearing significant updates from them in the next several months as they commence manufacturing of the Pal V limited edition model, which is only available to the first 90 buyers. Of course, media buzz does not translate into deliveries of an aircraft. We at ANN have seen numerous cases where main media hype regarding an aviation product has little to do with the product performance, delivery, or meeting promises to consumers. 
It's Thursday, which means it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. The folks at Redbird Flight Simulation, Redbird Flight Training, and Redbird Skyport rank high on our list of high-level innovations in our aviation business. An example of this is the innovation is what's called the Redbird Migration. This year, that migration takes place on October 25th and 26th. Over the last six years, migration has become the leading conference for flight training professionals, and this year's promises to be even better. Hosted at the Redbird Skyport Aviation Laboratory in Texas Hill Country, Migration will feature presentations from a wide range of industry leaders and small group breakout sessions focused on providing solutions to the real-world problems facing flight schools and universities. And of course, we at ANN will be there to cover all the events. We'll be producing special videos of program speakers and we'll report on news about new innovations and training. You'll be able to read about it on Aero News, and you can count on the coverage by Airborne Unlimited. If you can't make it there, we'll bring it to you. After these messages, sea divers find rocket debris with ancient ships. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The aviation industry is full of news and we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. It's been found that the 450-year-old shipwrecks have something in common with rocket science. Divers recently discovered three long-lost French vessels, complete with ornate bronze cannons mixed in with the remains of test rockets off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. Mr. Charles M. Childress was awarded the prestigious Charles Taylor Master Mechanic Award by the FAA in a ceremony earlier this month. The Charles Taylor Master Mechanic Award is named in honor of Charles Taylor, the first aviation mechanic in powered airplane flight. Air Force Space Command's Neighborhood Watch satellites from the Geosynchronous Space Situational Awareness Program recently responded to the Navy's request for help with a satellite of its own. They were able to supply the Navy with images of a malfunctioning satellite. The Crosswind Runway at Norfolk International Airport has been closed indefinitely as talks about the runway continue with the FAA. It's reported that it was determined the crash zones no longer meet FAA safety guidelines. Hawaiian Airlines pilots, who are represented by ALPA, will open a strike operations center near Honolulu International Airport on September 14th. National Mediation Board is pending. Well, that's it for today's trip around the batch. Now, let's move on to the rest of the news. A veterans group in San Diego is lobbying to have the Miramar Air Show canceled permanently. Television station KFMB reports that the local chapter of Veterans for Peace says that while there is a great deal of pageantry associated with the show, it's really about selling war, according to the member David Apperson. The group cites the recent accidents involving the Navy's Blue Angels and Air Force Thunderbirds as being among the reasons the show should be canceled. They say flying such displays puts highly trained military officers in jeopardy. A spokesman for MCAS Miramar reportedly said that the military supports the rights of all Americans to exercise their right to free speech. It's reported the event regularly attracts a half million spectators, many of them families with children. 
Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest in aerospace stories anytime at aerodashnews.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow.